uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, for the Open Forum webinar. And today, the speaker is uh, Professor Fan Zhang from uh, Tianjin University in China. And the title is uh, Numerical Simulations of Spray Combustion Using Open Forum in Internal Combustion Engine Conditions. And before the presentation, uh, I will introduce uh, Professor Zhang. So uh, Professor Zhang is an associate professor at the State K Laboratory of Engines at uh, Tianjin University in China, working on turbulent combustion modeling. Uh, she received uh, her PhD degree from uh, London University in 2013, where she focused on direct neuromicro simulations, DNS, of uh, turbulent combustion in advanced uh, low temperature internal combustion engines related uh, con the work involves the uh, new micro modeling of uh, large eddy simulation and uh, direct new micro simulation of uh, turbulent combustion with the computational free dynamics platform open form her research interest mainly focus on new micro modeling of uh, spray combustion in internal combustion engines evolving advanced uh, turbulent combustion models, such as the transport PDF method and also plasma-assisted uh, combustion in engines. So now uh, the time is uh, yours, uh, Professor Tam. Thank you very much. Mm, Professor Huangwei, and uh, I'm sorry for the uh, late. Um, and at the beginning, I really want to thank you My opportunity to share my work with uh, with you. Uh, okay. Um, good morning and good evening, and uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Fan Zhang, and uh, I'm from Tianyu um, University, the state the state K laboratory of engines. Uh, and today, my top my uh, topic is numerical simulations of spray combustion using open forming as engine conditions. And this work was done by me and my student, uh, Bu Jingqi and uh, Zhong Shihui. Uh, I will uh, talk about two parts. The first part is application of novel collision model to all the Lagrange simulation of inter impeachment spray. The second part is larger simulation of cool flame wave propagation in high pressure spray flames. So let's look at the first part. And the spray is very important in IC engines, especially when the fuel is injected from the injector and it undergoes the, um, the breakup, collision, and the evaporation, and the, and, and the interaction with the spray and the walls. And at the, a certain time, at a certain pressure and temperature, it uh, auto ignites. Well, um, in order to, uh, to get a better uh, droplet, uh, uh, evap droplet evaporation and uh, combustion, the rocket and the marine engines, they use this impingement spray to get uh, a better uh, collision of the droplets. So droplet collision is uh, uh, much more important in, the spray uh, in this spray um, process, and it is a fundamental phenomenon. So how do we simulate it? Yeah, we have two methods. The first is the volume of fluid VOF method. It can capture the droplet deformation and the topology changes, but uh, it is uh, too time consuming and uh, it is not easy to combine with combustion. So we choose to use the second method, the log launching particle tracking in the OLA log launching framework. Well, the spray is represented at some uh -huh. points. Yeah. Uh, like in the and so you have the millions of points in the puzzle. It treated as a diluted dispersed phase, and the, um, the liquid phase movement can be uh, can be characterized by the Newton's second law of motion. Yeah. The forces from the uh, from the fluid. And on the other part, the lag launching, uh, the lag launching source term, uh, you can get uh, the effect of the lag launching, if uh, lag launching um, effect in 
for example, the mass momentum and the energy to sum all of the and all the numbers of the droplets in the yeah in the cell space. So that means you have the interaction between the uh, um, between the particles and the flow, and also you consider the particle and the particle collisions. That is what we uh, what today we talk about the impingement spray case we used. And since the Lagrangian particle tracking cannot capture the droplet surface deformation, so um, so the, the some models are needed in the spray process. For example, the primary breakup, the secondary breakup model, and the collision model. Uh, well, and etc. And the, um, today we will talk about the collision uh, collision model because it is the most uh, weak. It's the weakest uh, model in the spray process. Uh, it has two and um, two um, two parts. The first part is uh, you need to def uh, you need to determine the currents of the collision. You, uh, that means when it when the two droplets collide, and then you need to uh, to give the the mass of the satellite uh, droplet after the collision. That we call it the post collision outcomes. Um, first, uh, let's look at the uh, the collision detection model. Uh, the, um, there are several detection models. I will introduce two of them. The first is uh, Auruk collision, Auruk model. It is a stochastic method because yeah, you see it mapped by this um, Poisson distribution equation, and the uh, collision number. Uh, between the two uh, two droplets uh, is based on the gas dynamics, and then the criterion is based on the stochastic method, which means this is a uh, uh, the um, the random number between zero and uh, oh, and one. This method uh, uh, it, um, is based on the stochastic idea, so it doesn't need a high computational cost. The second detection model is a nodding model. It is a deterministic trajectory method. And uh, we can define the two droplet collision by three uh, criteria. The first is they must move to, they must move each other, yeah, not in the opposite way. And then the parcel, the relative displacement, yeah, must be larger uh, than the than the distance between them. And the third uh, uh, criteria is the collision probability. As you see here, the probability is still a stochastic uh, idea. It uh, is a smaller uh, than a random number. And well, for most of the Lagrangian spray simulations, um, this method also uh, didn't need a high computational cost, even if it is a trajectory uh, method. Well, um, recently, Professor Jiaming and their group, um, they combined the, the trajectory method and the stochastic method to give a hybrid um, collision, uh, the collision detection model. Yeah, if you are interested, you can find the work. But for us, we are more interested in the um, post-collision regimes. Um, the Professor Ashri's uh, law and the risk uh, they did uh, yeah, a lot of experiments and the theoretical work to give us the, the bouncing and the coalescence, uh, reflective separation, stretching separation, yeah, to give this kind of regime diagram. Um, based on the uh, conservation mass, momentum, and energy, yeah, we can use two parameters. The one is wave number, the other is impact, uh, impact parameter. Uh, this B and uh, w and the wave number to um, to look at uh, the different regimes in this um, B and the W um, diagram. So let's look at the first uh, regime, the coalescence. If the wave number is low, um, the um, with, with the very uh, with the slow relative velocity, the two droplets can expel the gas uh, between between them. And uh, after the collision, they can uh, they, they collide and merge to one. If you increase the wave number, uh, 
the, the initial, if the initial force is smaller than the high pressure gas film, the two droplets will collide after they collide and then they will um, bounce like two rigid uh, balls. If, um, if you, um, after a critical uh, wave number, yeah, you can see if the initial force is, uh, um, is larger than the high pressure gas film between the two droplets, and the two droplets can even um, collide uh, coll again. Yeah. And for the, uh, for the stretching separation regime, uh, that means the two droplets, they collide uh, nearly head on like this. And then it undergoes the uh, oscillation uh, from the um, depot the disc to the cylinder and to the dumbbell. And finally, they split. All the yeah some is, and uh, sometimes some uh, child satellites can be formed. Well, if the two droplets uh, they collide uh, uh, off center like this, and the normal component of the velocity will make the droplet uh, to form ligament and uh, yeah and finally separate to form some satellite droplets. The tangential component of the velocity will uh, make the droplet rotate. You can see like this. Um, if we look at the models in open form, um, yeah, we draw the figures under the different uh, droplet size ratio. Yeah, for different droplet size ratio, we can find uh, the uh, models can only uh, discriminate the uh, two ridges, the coalescence and the grazing collision. The grazing collision is a simplified stretching separation without consider the satellite droplets. So. Um, that means the particle size change are not considered. Uh, after collision, only the mass and the, the satellite, uh, uh, no, no satellite droplet, only the mass and uh, yeah, the, um, the velocity, the velocity of the, um, of the droplets are considered. And the boundary between the two regimes are, um, are expressed by the coalescence coefficient, yeah, like this. So, uh, so we want to improve the original uh, original collision model of perform. So the first, uh, we uh, look at the collision detection model. Yeah, we uh, um, we improve the uh, previous nodding method based on the trajectory method. And the first two criteria is the same as before. And uh, uh, at last, uh, we consider the angle uh, between the two uh, between the two droplets. To make them um, to make them collide in a certain angle to make sure they can collide successfully. And then um, for the um, different criteria for the uh, post collision outcomes, we use this uh, this different this kind of formulas to uh, to um, give the boundary between the collisions bouncing and the bouncing and uh, this can and uh, this region third and the separate the stretching separation, coalescence, reflective separation, and also the two separation boundaries. And we pay more attention to the uh, two separation regimes. Um, um, uh, so from the dynamic characteristics of the stretching separation, we introduce a separation volume coefficient. Um, it means it is a ratio of the energy needed for the two droplets to separate divided by the total energy. Um, based on the criteria, we can, uh, we can get uh, the different uh, droplet, uh, satellite droplet numbers and uh, the uh, child droplet diameter, the, yeah, the velocity after the collision. Here, we only consider um, Mm, the two droplets. That means the one droplet only has uh, only has one particle. So no drop, no breakup. Some models are needed here. In similarly, in the reflective separation, we also use this separation volume coefficient to uh, to find the, the the different number of satellite droplets and the diameter, the velocity uh, of the satellite droplets. Mm, and for the primary and the secondary breakup model, 
uh, here we use a hybrid KHRT breakup model. That means, uh, yeah, in the breakup lens, yeah, in the breakup lens, we only consider the Kevin Hamholz instability only. And uh, if the uh, the lens is larger than the breakup lens, and the KH and RT, uh, both KH and RT model are considered. The lot of uh, commercial softwares have imp have proved the accuracy of this hybrid KHRD breakup model. Um, for the spray form, it only considers the uh, the injector the injectors inject the same mixture. But uh, um, for the inter impingement spray, normally the fuel and oxidizer are injected from the two uh, from the two different nozzles. So we want to implement the uh, the mixture uh, for different uh, uh, injectors. So what we do is in based on the spray form, uh, first uh, we implement our new trajectory uh, collision models. Yeah, it is, uh, if, uh, even though it is inherited from the stochastic collision model, it's, uh, uh, it is a trajectory collision model and uh, consider all the regimes after the collision. Um, in, on the left-hand side, and we combine the injection model list with the composition model list to consider the two injectors. They inject uh, two different uh, mixtures. Okay, now uh, let's look at uh, our results. First, uh, we want to validate the binary collision. Uh, if you look at uh, the regimes in the B and uh, with number space uh, for the two ethanol uh, droplet. Uh, if we yeah if we decrease the droplet size ratio from one to 0.5, we can see the yeah, the bouncing uh, the collapses region expand and uh, this is stretching separation and the reflective separation uh, separation regime they shrink and the the uh, the boundary of them uh, didn't overlap anymore. Uh, overall, we can see the lines from the simulation and the experiment and the experiments. The symbols they are uh, they uh, mm, they consistent uh, very well. Uh, so uh, we continue to look at uh, the the shape of the two um, of the binary collision. Uh, we can see our new model. Yeah, can capture the. Uh, the characteristics in the coalescence regime and uh, the stretching separation, we, we have seen the small droplet uh, are formed uh, and uh, the, in the reflect, reflective separation. Yeah, it's the same. The new model can capture the uh, satellite droplets characteristics. Well, for the original open form model, you can see it uh, yeah it cannot uh, accurately predict uh, the outcomes after the collision. Uh, it only predict well in the bouncing region. Um, here uh, the color uh, shows the simulation result and the symbols from the experiment. We can see the uh, number of the satellite droplets in the different uh, regimes. Um, as for the stretching separation regimes, we can find that most of the uh, satellites are formed in, uh, in this region when the B is between 0.3 to 0.8. And uh, uh, yeah, the simulation results is, uh, is consistent with the, uh, with the experimental results. If we increase the wave number, uh, we can see the, yeah, the satellite droplet uh, increase. Yeah, the overall distribution of the satellite droplet number is well captured compared with the experiments. And then we uh, uh, will, after the uh, binary collision validation, we want to look at inter impingement spray. We have nine cases. The first six cases are based on our new model, collision model, and the use, uh, and the first three. Uh, use the uh, hybrid k charge model. So cases four to six only consider the secondary breakup. The cases seven to nine uh, 
consider uh, it's it is the, uh, they are open form original case. Here we have the uh, give the parameter of SZ. SZ is the distance from the injector to the impeachment and uh, mm, to the impeachment point. Um, for this case, the uh, breakup length is 20 and uh, 21.5 millimeter, and the uh, we gave the three SZ uh, distances. Uh, which is below, which is a uh, uh, shorter than the big cup length, and the case two is uh, is larger. Uh, case two and three uh, are larger than the big cup distance, so we can uh, have the effect of this distance on the big cup. Uh, first, uh, let's look at uh, uh, the impingement spray shape. Um, we compare our new. Uh, model and uh, the open form model with the previous experiment and the simulation. Uh, we can find the original open form case. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's similar with the previous simulation, but they both show the divergence shape of this spray. And also a lot of uh, large, large droplets are formed in the, uh, in the boundaries, which is not very physical. And uh, for our new case, we can see the spray is as homogeneous as the uh, experiments. If we look at uh, the penetration length, length qualitatively, yeah, we can see the uh, case one, and two, three. Um, the, uh, the, our new models can predict, predict the uh, evolution of the penetration, um, penetration length. Um, they are much closer to the experimental results. Well, if you look at uh, case four to six, they're neglecting the primary breakup. So, which means the momentum loss uh, will be larger. Uh, so, uh, therefore, the penetration length is under um, predicted, predicted, like these lines. And if you look at the open form case, uh, the, because of the lacking of because of the lacking of a primary breakup and also the weak collision models, the penetration length is much uh, is much um, or is even worse uh, under predicted compared with the experiments. Um, if you look at the SMD. Uh, um, we can see the SMD with the original open form model, mm, this blue and uh, this blue symbols, and they are out of out of error range. Uh, uh, if we uh, look at our case uh, compared with the uh, open form case, we can find the um, our case uh, um, has the, um, has a closer a result up, uh, at the downstream of the um, have the um, much similar result of the SMD with the uh, uh, with the experiment. Well, the open form um, yeah over predicted over predicted this SMD. Uh, if you um, in, if you um, if you uh, increase increase this um, this distance of SZ. Uh, we can find uh, the finer, the finer uh, broke up, broke up droplets like this uh, red line, red line and, and the symbols. Um, it's, uh, we can predict the trend uh, of these uh, finer droplets. And uh, also uh, for, the, for our cases uh, at the different impingement point, you can see the obvious decrease, decrease of the SMD. Um, so yeah, but um, so it, that means in, in open form, yeah, you cannot see this uh, this kind of decrease, which uh, which is uh, much much similar, yeah, with experiments, yeah, in our case. Uh, now we look at the SMD uh, from the um, in the downstream. Yeah, 
and different lines means the, diff the distance from the impingement point at the different uh, ax axial um, position. So if we um, compare our case with the open form case, you can find the open form case, the blue line, it fluctuates a lot. Yeah. And, um, our and our model is a red line. It can predict uh, the larger the larger droplet at the both radial ends. Yeah, um, at the both radial ends. Uh, um, because um, because at the boundaries, it is prone to be bouncing and uh, separation regimes. Um, in the um, binary collision. Uh, we uh, we use the droplet size ratio delta is as a very important parameter, but uh, for the inter impingement spray, um, the, the spray contains a lot of puzzles, and one puzzle contains many particles. So in this kind of condition, the droplet size ratio may not reflect the mass of the inertial uh, forces of the puzzles accurate, accurately. So. Uh, here we propose another parameter, the mass ratio, uh, mass mass ratio, to see the effect uh, on the different cases. Yeah, we can find the um, for small, very small mass ratio. That means a very large particle, very large droplet collide with a very small droplet. Yeah, it is easier for them to collide. You can see the 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 blue the blue color the blue region yeah well if you uh, if you increase the mass ratio uh, for a two um, for a two more comparable uh, droplet uh, size yeah at this time most of the mass ratios are for bouncing and two separation yeah the mass ratio if the mass ratio is larger than 0.3 um, if you look at the collision outcome distribution, we can find that most of the collisions um, occur at the impingement point. Yeah, the the green color. Um, and uh, but for the coalescence, uh, it is um, is easier to happen in the upstream of the impingement point, like the purple uh, purple region shows. And so finally, I, uh, I have some conclusions and most of them have, uh, I, have, um, I have shown before. And so uh, I want to move to the next part, the large light simulation of cool flame wave propagation in high pressure spray flames. And the, um, the cool flame, uh, the low temperature combustion is very important. Uh, on the engine performance and the emissions, especially in the advanced uh, uh, low temperature combustion engines. Uh, well, in this engine, the fuel is injected earlier than the, than the traditional diesel, uh, diesel engines. Um, so uh, the, uh, the engine combustion network is in, they did a lot of spray series, series to uh, for the model um, for the model uh, validation, for example, the flame shape and the flame um, the flame penetration lens and lift off lens and also the suit. And so what we did is uh, we want to use the basic uh, the basic spray A to study the low temperature combustion. And that is uh, that is the aim. That is also the aim of the spray A experiments. And the um, the low the cool flame, or you call the low temperature combustion, can be found in this fuels uh, which has the uh, negative and uh, temperature uh, region, um, which the cool flame can be characterized by the RO2 yeah pathways. And the format head, and the format head formation. Um, also, the high temperature combustion is associated with a rapid increase of temperature and the concentration of OH radicals and uh, the and the violent consumption of HO of format head and H two O two. 
the, uh, the, um, the interaction between the cool flame and uh, uh, high temperature flame uh, has been uh, has been found in previous literatures. For example, by the Lagrange flame later calculation, people found uh, the ignition kernels are formed in a lean and uh, um, higher temperature region, um, a relatively higher temperature region, and then a and, and, uh, cool flame uh, a rich, uh, cool, cool flame formed from this kernel. Uh, and then um, after that, the high temperature uh, ignition, a uh, high temperature flame are formed. Um, so they uh, they found uh, the high temperature, uh, the high temperature flame propagation was assisted by the uh, cool flame uh, wave propagate. Uh, well, the details can uh, did, well the details will not be given in this case. Um, by using two D DNS. Um, people found uh, the the ignition kernels are formed in a wide range of equivalence ratio in the mixed fraction space, uh, but uh, the ignition kernel uh, was for um, was first formed at the um, at the equivalence ratio, uh, which is much richer than the homogeneous most uh, most reactive equivalence ratio. Um, they um, and they uh, gave uh, the reason maybe because of the um, cool, flame, cool flame wave propagation because they find that before the high, the high temperature ignition, uh, it is preceded with the uh, cool flame wave propagate. Well, this kind of case um, neglect the um, job later evaporation and the spray process. And so what, to, um, so what we want to do is using the uh, 3D uh, large edge simulation to see the to and the advanced combustion model to see the effect of cool flame on the spray ignition, high temperature flame, and the flame uh, stabilization will be started. So uh, here we choose the transport um, transported probability density function TPDM method. Uh, here it shows the density weighted 1.1 time joint PDF of scalars to describe the subgrade turbulence uh, process. The psi is a vector, which is a realization of the random scalar variable uh, phi. And the phi is a uh, yeah, combination of the, all of the species and uh, the entropy, because in the open form reacting force, they use the um, they use entropy in the energy equation. Uh, and here is the NS is the number of species. Um, this kind of transport PDF equation is not easy to, yeah, to solve. And so, uh, we, use, so we use the, uh, the stochastic, uh, Olerian stochastic field method to solve this equation. That means the previous PDF equation can be represented by a set of stochastic fields, uh, which is uh, generated using the Monte Carlo approach and transported in the Eulerian framework. And the derivation of this transport uh, of this uh, equation can be found in the Vanillo's, Vanillo's uh, paper and also in Shijie's um, PhD thesis. Uh, let's see this uh, equation. Uh, that means the increment of the uh, of the scalar in the stochastic field. Yeah, it equals to yeah the convec the convection of this uh, scalar and uh, the turbulent diffusion, the chemical reaction, the macro mixing term, and the winner term. Uh, here is the uh, the the uh, 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 here the epsilon n is the uh, random field of the n stochastic field. After we solve this uh, stochastic field equation, uh, we can average to get the mean average, uh, mean ensemble average of the stochastic field. Yeah. Mm, to get the uh, the species or mass fractions of the mean species, uh, the mean species of the mass fraction of the the entropy. Um, how to solve this equation? 
um, Professor Jones proposed uh, three steps uh, to solve it. Uh, the first is uh, you, uh, in, you integrate the stochastic field by um, um, through convection and diffusion in the implicit uh, method, and also the integration of the winner term in uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in um, this uh, impl implicit method, yeah, the the convection diffusion are integrated in the explicit method. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, these two terms are integrated in the um, implicit method, and the winner term is integrated in the uh, explicit in the ex um, the uh, ex, uh, this is the uh, the e explicit term, and then the mean field uh, are updated uh, after the the stochastic field uh, is, is obtained. And the step two is a macro mixing process, and step three is a chemical reaction um, process. Well, and this and uh, this. Um, three processes uh, can um, can give um, stable uh, results, but uh, in the ESF approach, it uh, can inevitably uh, can introduce a statistical error resulting from the limited numbers of stochastic fields. Um, that's because only when the number of the stochastic field approaching infinity, the winner term can approach zero. But uh, um, but otherwise, uh, otherwise this um, this equation, uh, this winner term can this winner term can introduce some errors. Um, um, so uh, if the, if you have the um, the finity, stochastic um, uh, field, the mean field uh, is not equal to the ensemble average of the stochastic field. Um, this um, case is even worse in the multi-species reacting flows. Uh, if you sum all of this uh, mass fraction, you, will, you can get the non-zero part of the winner term, which will introduce the element uh, mass loss or gain. Uh, so, which means it will validate the yeah, mass conservation law. So, uh, what we do is we introduce two corrections. The first correction is mean correction. Uh, that means after the first step of the um, of the transport of uh, a stochastic field, uh, you uh, you calculate the trans the transport of the mean field. And then you calculate the error between the mean field and the stochastic field. And uh, yeah, you sum this error to the, to the, uh, the first step. Um, and then you um, do the macro mixing process like before. Um, but this macro mixing may also introduce some error because of when the turbulence is very strong, the stochastic, the, the, the mixed fraction from uh, from the stochastic field can be um, can be uh, below zero or up to up to one. So you need to give a bound correction to make sure the bound correction to make sure the mixed fraction is um, is within the physical limit. So uh, and then. In the third step, you uh, you continue you continue to do the chemical reaction. Well, in this uh, process, you can uh, you can um, you can make sure the element mass uh, mass fraction is conserved in this um, procedure. The more detailed validation and the case studies can be found uh, in this um, paper. So. Um, because the PDF method is very time consuming, so we want to update, uh, we want to accelerate the, uh, the chemical, uh, reaction, chemical reaction process and to reduce the computational time. 
A general pro approach to accelerate the chemical reaction source term is chemistry coordinate mapping method. Uh, with that means we group the cells in the CFD method to the uh, to the phase uh, space uh, based on and calculate the reaction rate um, based on the um, pressure, temperature, mass uh, fraction from the um, from the CFD space. Uh, in, uh, normally, we can use a temperature equivalent ratio, uh, non-dimensional scalar dissipation rate, fuel mass fraction, and the nitrogen mass fraction as our dimensional parameters. And it has shown a good uh, result uh, um, within this method. Uh, so then we will start the spring A cases. In open form, we use the second order use time and space, uh, NVD gamma scheme for advection term, central difference scheme for diffusion term. We use eight stochastic fields and the macro, uh, IEM model, the mode constant equals to two. Uh, we use a fixed time step 50 nanosecond. At the beginning, we want to yeah, validate the grid, the grid size for the vapor region. Then we studied the different, the three different ambient temperatures to study the, um, to, the cool flame effect. Um, after the uh, liter literature review of the past 10 years, uh, literature, we found the people, the try and error method are always used to find the, the, the best grid size and uh, the spring models. So, um, so it, that means uh, um, it is not clear how to choose this, uh, this model parameters and the grid sizes. So uh, we want to test them. Um, for example, we use a liquid. Yeah, the liquid uh, grid size of is 62.5 uh, micrometer and the uh, three different uh, uh, vapor size from the 62.5 to 250 micrometer. Uh, let's look at uh, the temporary evolution of the uh, radial integrated uh, format head mass uh, along the time. And uh, yeah, the mm, and uh, is uh, in the different uh, axial distances. Uh, from the result, we can find for different uh, uh, the, for different uh, liquid uh, for different uh, vapor grades, we can find that this almost the same on site of the intense cool flame. So uh, we finally we choose to use a vapor uh, the vapor size of uh, the um, grid size of one hundred twenty five and the liquid size of sixty. 2.5 micrometer. Um, then uh, we want to validate our ESM model. Um, from uh, if we look at the yeah the vapor penetration length, lens, it is uh, well um, uh, well captured by the, the LES result compared with experiments. Well, the liquid penetration penetration length is a little over predicted. Um, uh, as for the ignition delay time, the uh, high temperature ignition delay is, is a little underpredicted, but the, uh, the low temperature ignition delay time, yeah, it can well captured by the LES result. Um, then the pressure rise and the lift of length, yeah, we can find a very good result uh, from, the LES re from the LES studies. And if you look at the spatial distribution of format head, we can find the, uh, the uh, initiation of the format head in the periphery of the spray, which is similar with the experiment. And then we can find the, the progress of this format head um, forming uh, in the downstream uh, until the 490 micrometer. Uh, which shows our LES result and can give a very can give the good result um, in with experiments. So that means we can analyze our the, our results uh, based on the LES data. 
so uh, first uh, uh, we look at the um, the maximum temperature and formaldehyde in the equivalence ratio space and the three different uh, ambient temperatures. Uh, here is a critical temperature for high temperature ignition is defined uh, by the temperature of 1150 Kelvin. Uh, we can see um, the cool flame wave propagation uh, from the formaldehyde space. Uh, the, the wave can the wave can penetrate, can penetrate to even feel richer region if the ambient temperature increase from 800 to 1000 Kelvin. Um, and uh, as then uh, we, uh, we calculate the ignition delay time along the adiabatic mixing line. We find the most direct mixture switches uh, to the fuel richer uh, region. Uh, when the uh, ambient temperature increased. Um, well, uh, in the, uh, with the cool flame wave propagation, we found that the ignition of the 3D LES can be earlier than the 0D most reactive mixture. So the reasons will be explained later. Now let's look at the uh, temporal evolution of the format head, uh, the RO2 and the format head. Uh, in the spray and this, in, in this uh, axial cross section, uh, we find the cool flame wave propagation uh, in, initiate, initiates at the shear layer and moves towards the downstream and the core region. Well, um, but the uh, the high temperature ignition, yeah, um, you can see the red the, the red lines. It is not uh, in the direction of the cool flame wave propagation, but uh, it's, a, uh, it's in the periphery of the spray plume and a little upstream of the flame tip. Um, because in the downstream, the flame tip, the, uh, the local scalar dissipation rate is relatively high. So yeah, the high temperature um, is affected yeah, by the local mixing rate. You can also find, yeah, find it in the right figure. Uh, here we, uh, we draw the conditional average of the formatted temperature and OH uh, in the file space. And the data are from the uh, upstream, um, upstream and the uh, downstream. So um, that means, yeah, we see in the, uh, in the in, in the downstream, uh, we can see um, the cool flame wave propagation is insensitive to the local mixture fraction. Yeah, and but uh, um, but uh, the um, but the uh, if you see the temperature and uh, the OH, the high temperature uh, ignition is affected by the local mixing. Yeah, the, that means you see the symbol, the, the circles, the uh, small, the small uh, scalar dissipation rate means a higher temperature. Mm. And if we look at the low temperature case, uh, we can see the um, the cool flame wave propagation uh, moves from the upstream towards the downstream. And accordingly, the high temperature ignition, the red lines are formed in the direction of the cool flame wave propagation. Um, that means uh, because uh, in the, because in this case, the local scalar dissipation rate, is local mixing rate, is too low to affect the high temperature. At this case, and then we want to use the uh, chemical explosive mode to uh, analyze the, the different uh, critical combustion phenomena. Um, uh, uh, you can uh, write the, uh, the derivative of the chemical source term. Um, the source term is uh, if you uh, write, uh, um, if you write the Jacobi matrix of this chemical source term, and uh, do the uh, do the uh, decomposition of this uh, decomposition of this uh, Jacobi matrix 
uh, you can get the eigenvalue of this uh, of this Jacobi of this chemical short term Jacobi matrix. If the eigenvalue, the real part of the eigenvalue is positive, uh, here it is lambda e. If it is larger than, if it is positive, which means here it is a chemical uh, react, a chemical a chemical explosive mode. This method was first proposed by Professor Lu. Um, late um, um, to characterize the, uh, the, the to um, characterize the ignition in uh, in the in, to characterize the ignition phenomena, um, but uh, uh, this uh, method didn't consider the uh, the diffusion term. Here it uh, is S. So uh, Xu uh, later improved this method. Uh, we uh, they get, um, um, they um, uh, they use uh, uh, the left eigenvalue uh, times this uh, the previous equation and uh, to get uh, the projected diffusion term this B E times the omega to uh, and also the projected uh, direction term this is B E times this S the diffusion term. So you can get a you can get a ratio of the diffusion term over the chem over the chemical reaction term. So the, to uh, look at the local chemical uh, mode indica indicator. So that means if the lambda e the chemical uh, explosive mode is larger than zero, uh, it, it it is ignition. But um, but if this value lambda e is less than unity, uh, which means a very uh, weak um, ignition, so we still call it a fre fresh mixture. So if the lambda e is larger than unity, and also if the alpha, the alpha is the uh, the ratio of the yeah the diffusion term to the reaction term. So if the alpha is less than um, negative uh, negative one. Uh, it means the the mode is extinction. Uh, if it's between negative one to the uh, one, it is the mode is ignition, and it is larger than one, it is diffusion. So it means the diffusion term is uh, is is more important. So um, we uh, we did this same analysis and to look at the uh, the different extinction, diffusion, and ignition mode. Of the uh, of the cool flame wave propagation before the high temperature ignition um, for the uh, for the three cases. Um, from the results, we can find that the cool flame wave um, wave propagation is mainly dominated dominated by ignition mode. Yeah, the red color. While the diffusion mode is found at the upstream region, where the mixture is fuel rich and the heat release is relatively low. Now, more diffusion mode is found in the low temperature case. Uh, well, uh, in, in the 3D spray flames, the shorter ignition delay time is found yeah, than, the, than the homogeneous reactor. Yeah, uh, why? Uh, we can find, uh, we can get some ideas from the low temperature case. Here you can see the mixture in the spray up region. Um, uh, uh, in the spree, uh, the mixture in the spray uh, tip region, uh, tip region can be mixed with uh, uh, low temperature ignition products from the spray upstream by turbulent uh, eddies, uh, and to accelerate the ignition delay time. So the uh, temperature and the fuel stratific stratifications and uh, turbulent mixing. Um, uh, lead to the shorter ignition delay time in the 3D spray flames uh, than the 0D, um, which means we need the accurate description of the turbulent mixing, uh, a modeling of the cool flame wave propagation and the high temperature ignition in the high pressure spray flames. Uh, at last, uh, uh, here are the conclusions. Yeah. Uh, so 
Uh, at the last, uh, I want to thank Professor Xu Songbai and Dr. Shi Jiexu in London University for their valuable discussion. And uh, I want to thank the, the funding from the NSFC. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much for your uh, wonderful talk, uh, Professor Zhang. So in the following, uh, we will have the Q and uh, uh, A session. So uh, to the audience and also the panelists, uh, so if you have any questions, you can uh, submit uh, QA and or, or uh, chat. Okay, and panelists, if you have any questions, you can just unmute yourself and discuss with uh, uh, Professor Zhang. Okay, yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, any uh, any uh, questions? Um, okay, so uh, maybe I uh, start first. Yeah, so uh, for uh, slides, uh, uh, for, your, for the second part you introduced, right? Uh, for slides uh, 48, uh, we have the uh, contours uh, for R2 and also for CH2O, 48. The 48. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, so uh, for the instant of 120 microseconds, so why uh, we have some, uh, why we have a higher concentration of CO2 at the neck of the, you know, the stoichiometric line? Maybe you uh, already explained, but uh, probably, you know, I uh, missed something here. Uh, you mean uh, the CH2O? Yeah. What do you mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm, for the neck um, of the stoichiometric line, uh, for the middle instant, 120 microsecond. Mm, uh, here, this, this line, is this the figure? Uh, yes. So you mean why we have a lot of CH2O? No, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Mm. Because uh, because in in this region the temperature is uh, is still relatively low. Because even the the surroundings is ten hundred Kelvin, but mm -hmm. the spring uh, the spring core region is relatively low. The temperature. Okay. okay. So uh, here, what is the droplet distribution? Because uh, you didn't visualize the droplets here. Because uh, I think okay. we have, we have Actually, very quickly, right? Yeah, yeah, it evaporates very quickly, and you cannot see them anymore in this region. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, mm. okay. Then uh, one question from the audience. Uh, so uh, have a question about the definition of low temperature ignition delay time. Why this? Uh, why there are two different uh, criteria? Uh, okay. Um, uh, I think uh, that's because we uh, we want to. Um, mm, uh, we find uh, the different uh, uh, the different definition actually from the literature, and uh, different people they may have the different uh, the definition of this uh, low temperature uh, ignition delay time. So we want to compare them, so that we show the uh, the results of to to give the difference of this uh, of this ignition delay time. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So uh, any other uh, questions? So for the SEMA analysis, you, may, uh, you uh, identify different regime, right? Uh, ignition and also uh, another one is uh, extinction, right? Yeah. And division, yeah. So here, uh, the ignition mode, is it possible for you to further, you know, identify the contributions from the uh, high temperature chemistry and also low temperature chemistry, because uh, here uh, that, um, you consider uh, the overall, right? Yeah, it should be. But uh, here uh, we choose the time. It's only it's the cool flame time instant. So if you look at the ignition of the high temperature, and uh, so maybe you should choose another um, time instant to analyze the different modes. Okay, okay. And then uh, the follow-up question from the audience. So which should we choose, 2% or 20%? Oh, okay, that's this a good question. question. 
Uh, I think at the, at, at the first, uh, you should uh, compare with your experiments. Uh, the experiments will give their ignition delay time. So you, uh, you can follow them. And, uh, um, but uh, um, but uh, in order to compare our result, uh, sometimes the, maybe the, the criterion used in experiments is not uh, exactly uh, suitable for the LES result, for our simulation results. So from my opinion, I think you should tell the, uh, the, the, the readers which criteria you use. And uh, yeah, maybe you can just give this option to the readers. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, thanks. And then another question from uh, Professor Yao Wei. Uh, he asked uh, how many particles were modeled in your simulation? Uh-huh. Um, um, I cannot uh, remember exactly the, uh, the numbers, but uh, it's uh, several millions at least. Okay, yeah, okay, thanks. Um, any other uh, questions? So uh, in your simulation, you use the parcel method, right? Yeah, yeah, parcel then, method. Uh, yeah, then you consider breakup and also the coalescence, right? So once we consider these two processes, the number of the droplet in the parcel will change, right? Uh, yeah, I need to uh, mention that in the first part of my study, we consider the, the exact collision, very detailed collision regimes. But in the spray um, case, uh, mm -hmm. the collision, the droplet the collision model is not uh, as important as the inter impingement cases. So okay. in that case, we didn't consider. Okay, but how about that? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, but how about the um, breakup model in the second case, in the LES case? Ah, uh, breakup model. We use the uh, also the hybrid breakup model. Oh, okay. I didn't give it. Sorry. Yeah. Because there is actually a droplet resolution problem. So if you have breakup, then the droplet inside one parcel actually increase very quickly, right? Then yes. The, uh, if you have a very large droplet number in one parcel, this somehow actually homogenized the droplet properties at a particular location, right? So I'm not sure actually you, uh, you know, investigated this problem or not. <laughs> uh, sorry, we didn't look at this okay. denominator. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, never mind. So there is one question from the audience. So what is the distribution of the injected droplet size in the um, comparison of different breakup models. So same as the uh, whole size. Uh, so what is the distribution of the injected droplet size in comparison of different breakup models? This is his uh, question. Mm -hmm. Let's see, uh, the distribution of the injected, oh, the distribution. Uh, okay, in, in comparison different to, um, uh, so we didn't uh, uh, analyze the whole size. And uh, for the injected uh, uh, job laid size, mm -hmm. um, for the spray case, we, uh, you can give the, like the Ross Lambda distributor uh, job laid size distribution. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, uh, but uh, um, comparison, um, but I, I I didn't remember the first case what we what we gave the job the size at the big um at the beginning hmm. the comparison of the different uh, breakup models uh, the breakup models uh, mm, mm, the break uh, we only we only analyze the um, the different uh, breakup um, actually the breakup models we we considered is the hybrid uh, breakup hybrid KHRT mm -hmm. and uh, the um, KHRT secondary breakup model that means we only consider secondary breakup and neglecting the primary breakup um, 
So, uh, so the the result uh, of cases one, two, three compared mm -hmm. with cases four, five, six are mm -hmm. the um, are the effect of these break up models. Um, okay. So, so if you look at uh, yeah, if you look at the results, you can see the mm -hmm. yeah the penetration length is underestimated if you neglect the primary breakup. Okay. For the others, I um, I see I didn't give the I didn't give the more results. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, thanks. <laughs> so, uh, any other uh, questions? Uh, yeah, uh, Professor Zhen Zheng has questions. Yeah, so Professor Zheng, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Professor Zhang, for a very nice talk. Yeah, yes, it's you. very interesting to see that you, uh, yes, simulation can reproduce the core frame uh, observed in experiments. Uh, basically, the previous study shows that the auto ignition was promoted by the core frame, core frame ignition. Uh, I'm wondering in your simulation whether you can uh, close the low temperature chemistry and to show that the uh, hot, hot high temperature can have high longer ignition. I, <clears throat> I mean that in, in our simulation, uh, usually we we will close the excuse me we we will close the low temperature chemistry just. Uh, uh, artificially, just the low temperature, low temperature chemistry, uh, and we see that the high temperature ignition will become much longer because of the loss of the low temperature chemistry. I'm wondering in your simulation whether you can do this, just to change the chemistry. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, that's a very uh, good idea. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Chen. Um, at uh, at this time, we didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't. Uh, uh, do this. Uh, do this. Try. Um, and uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, your uh, your conclusion is very reasonable because mm -hmm. we have found uh, the uh, intermediate species and the heat release from the low temperature combustion can uh, can facilitate facilitate the uh, the combustion of the high temperature. So I think uh, it should be and uh, the result. Uh, uh, like yours, um, okay. yeah. But maybe later we we will try, uh, yeah, and uh, look at. Okay. Uh, another question is that in this kind of jet frame, uh, I think there is also some parts are auto ignition and some parts are flame. Uh, you used the SIMA to uh, to make the difference. I'm wondering that I, I see the results. Most of parts are the ignition, right? It seems yeah. that the the best part of the flame. Uh, yes, yeah, that's yeah, the, I mean, I mean. Mm, yes, you are right. From the previous DNS result, they found the cool flame wave um, because they they found the reaction part and the diffusion part are comparable. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, from our analysis, yeah, we found the most of part is ignition. Uh, so I think so I think uh, maybe more work should be done to uh, to see um, to see if uh, and to see what a difference between the DNS result and this LES result. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Because um, also this um, yeah we uh, <coughs> what we did is use this criterion actually. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, and to find uh, the the diffusion mode if the alpha is larger than one. Okay. So maybe we need to yeah have some other um, criteria assistant. Uh, maybe can give more detailed and uh, more accurate uh, yeah uh, findings. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, any uh, more questions?
so I have another question on slice uh, 42. You use the NVD, uh, NVD scheme, right? Is there, any, is there any special consideration for this one? Because for instance, like a uh, source term, they use uh, the, uh, okay. So here is also gamma scheme, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. is there any uh, special consideration in this case, in your case? Sorry, <laughs> we, we, we don't have. Okay. Okay, and that's fine. Okay. Mm, and uh, okay. Um, so the panelists and audience, uh, you have any other questions you want to discuss with uh, Professor Zhang? Okay, so uh, if no more questions, and uh, uh, please join me uh, thanking uh, Professor Zhang again. And uh, uh, thank you very much for your very nice presentation. Uh, introducing our work right here to open form. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Professor Huang Wei. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, and okay. uh, thank you everybody to to join us in the weekend. Yeah, okay, yeah. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye.